Hi guys, this is WNews.com and I'm here with the Acer Aspire Switch 12S for a full review. This is a Windows 10 Home detachable with a metal chassis and a 12.5 inch screen. It comes bundled with a keyboard, it attaches to it magnetic magnetically, you saw that in the unboxing. And uh, there are two versions of the tablet, one has an Intel Core M3 processor, it's priced at $999 and these days on Amazon it's uh, $500 thanks to a special price cut. Now, the uh, Core M5 version is 1000 bucks. we have the Core M3 version and now let's talk about the design. So, we're dealing with a product that's obviously made of metal, it has a pretty solid build, it feels like a laptop lid and it attaches magnetically to the keyboard, as you can see here it also has two pretty nice latching thingies, so here we go, magnetic, docked and looking very much like a laptop. So we also have sloped sides to the tablet as you can see here and a sort of chromed look, shiny as you can also see. We got pretty comfy buttons for windows, volume and power. Although the power one is kind of finicky, sometimes uh, simply pressing it makes the device stop instead of going into standby. I have to say it's not a huge device, it weighs 1.4 kilograms, I've seen worse so to say, so it's reasonably compact. This is how you remove the tablet part from the keyboard and guess what you can also prop it like this for some video watching and then remove it again for other purposes now let's fire on the tablet again so it's pretty good looking it's quite comfy for a 12.5 incher it's got reasonable bezels for my hands at least and the keyboard is made of plastic has comfy keys it lights up and has a generous trackpad now the total thickness of the device is 17.3 millimeters which is quite big but once again for a combo it's okay now on the display front what you're seeing here is a full hd ips lcd with a 12.5 inch diagonal and a 16 to 9 aspect now the experience is going to be tested when watching this video that we have prepared Okay, so we're dealing here with the vivid colors, one would say too vivid, wide view angles and the screen is not exactly hugely reflective, which is a nice thing. The brightness is reasonable, the image is pretty crisp, there is a lot of white here, so it feels a bit washed out at times. And I'm happy to inform you that the screen is not a fingerprint magnet, which is always, always good news. Okay, so now let's see how we did when it comes to the... Um, other aspects of the screen okay so let's see what the pixels of the display look like under the microscope here we go that's what the pixels of the screen look like under the microscope it's an RGB stripe setup and we also use the lux meter to measure the brightness and we achieved 360 lux units which is just okay it surpasses the Chewy Hi12 tablet and it's 304 lux but scores below the Lenovo Yoga Tab 3 Pro and as far as the screen settings go they're the usual things you see in Windows 10 like text size color calibration and other such things now inside this slate you can find uh, an Intel processor and uh, let's see what we're dealing with here. It's an Intel Core M3 as I mentioned before. Let's go up and keep this pressed. Properties and here we go. It's an Intel Core M3 clocked at 0.90 GHz. You can turn it all the way up to 2.2 GHz with Turbo Boost. We also have 4 GB of RAM but the Core M5 one has 8 GB of RAM and there's also 128 GB of storage on this model and 256 on the pricier one. It's SSD storage so it should be fast. We also have a micro SD card slot and the device does not suffer from lag. It's uh, miles faster than all the other tablets with Windows 10 we've tested from China these days so it totally blows them out of the water when it comes to performance and fluidity of use. Okay, so it may not be able to run GTA 5, but you can play some basic games that you can find in the store, that's for sure. Although I installed one and it required 6 gigabytes of RAM, so it didn't run fine. Now, if you want to play a game, for example, you can play Riptide GP2, which is sort of a benchmark game. Well, at least till they make available Riptide GP Renegade, which is the next iteration of the series. So, here we go. 
Okay, so touch steering and continue. Water looks mighty fine, the colors are okay, and the experience is quite pleasant. So when it comes to gaming, everything checks out and we are pretty happy with what this tablet has to offer. Okie dokie, so now we exit from here and we discuss other aspects of the tablet's functioning. Don't expect any complex benchmarks, we're not about that, so let's see how we did in the benchmark that we did on this device. Three. Just so you know, we get an Intel HD Graphics 515 graphics solution and as far as the GFX benchmark goes, you can see here its results. So I would say that basically we have double the score of an Intel Atom previous gen tablet like the Asus Transformer Book T100G, at least in GFX bench. Sadly, Antutu and 3 d Mark would not run and Antutu for example would reset the tablet, which is a bummer. And what I liked about the device is the excellent write and read speed, the write speed of 133 mega per second and read speed 418 mega per second, so excellent SSD performance. We also did a relative benchmark and achieved a score of 4135, while the ASUS T100G had 1892, so more than double, that's impressive. We also did a Sun Spider test, that one came out excellent, 122. And performance is good, but forget about gaming on this device. Now on the battery front, we're dealing here with a device that opts for a 34 watt hour lithium polymer unit with two cells and a promise of eight hours of functioning, at least on paper. Where uh, in real life we achieved six hours and 55 minutes, which is okayish and surpasses the T-Class T-Book 16 Pro, for example. Um, and also the Honda Obook 20 Plus, but scored below the Chewy Hi12 battery wise. When it comes to continuous usage, you can see the battery plummeting as you keep using it. I would say that you should be able to get one day of work, which is basically 8 hours out of it without a problem. Charging is, let's say, decent, 2 hours and 45 minutes, at least superior to the iPad Air 2, and you get your tweaks here with performance and power and sleep settings, including this battery saver feature. Okay, now when it comes to acoustics, we can already see there's something special here. We got stereo speakers, one here and one here. They're placed below the screen and they're not regular speakers. We have some Dolby acoustics going on. So let's listen to some music. Turn the volume all the way up. Okay, so now the conclusions, I have to say I'm pretty impressed by these stereo speakers, great keys, excellent bass, voice, amplitude and it's a pretty, pretty capable set of speakers, plus we also have the Dolby action going on with these very welcome modes and options, including special personalization for virtualizer surround, dialog enhance and volume leveler among others. So all of these are welcome, but let's see how we did as far as the decibel meter test is concerned. Okay, so we achieved a value of 87.5 decibels, which was the maximum value achieved at the front of the device. This is quite solid, it beats the Xiaomi Mi Pad 2 tablet, but scores below the Nokia N1, still among the top tablets when it comes to the acoustics. Now, one of the most interesting aspects of the tablet is the camera setup. If you go to the back, you can see here a special mechanism. Uh, it should integrate theoretically three camera sensors and a special depth measuring thingy here. It's capable of 3D capture. And as far as I know, at the front, you get a two megapixel uh, webcam and uh, the actual core features of the camera are triggered by apps. So you have something like Chroma, which is very interesting. You can basically film a person in 3D and apply a sort of chroma key behind it using software. So you got the Shaolin effect, Dizzy, Color My World, Out of Focus, Sticker World, 
and all sorts of crazy backgrounds to apply behind people after filming or photographing their contour. This is what Chroma is all about and another very cool app that I like a lot, don't know why I'm saying that, and um, here we go. It's called Itsy's 3D Scanner, it's very funky if you like to design clothes and want to choose your bridesmaid dress, here we go. You can scan a person in 3D, you have to spin around the person and uh, then you'll be able to trigger the mechanism. Okay, so you scan the person, find the face. Okay, and then you can create a new scan, you can scan a full body and you can even envision a person's dress with this mode, so that's very nice. We go back here and see what's happening and uh, you can see your models, you can see a bunch of samples, so we got this guy here. You can apply t-shirts to him or experiment with various t-shirt designs. So that's what the 3D camera does, a lot of other stuff as well which is implemented via the Intel RealSense apps available here. You go here, you even have games, you have all sorts of control mechanisms. This is just the beginning, a full suite is coming soon. So excellent camera setup. So you can scan objects and people in 3D and interact with games and apps. And now it's time to ditch this and go to the Microsoft Edge browser. I'm going to rely on the virtual keyboard for once and access tabletnews.com. Here we go. As usual, Microsoft Edge loads pages very fast. And by the way, the virtual keyboard is also pretty comfy. And I have to remind you that we got an excellent result in Sun Spider. Now, on the connectivity front, this device provide you, uh, provides you, excuse me, with a lot of options. Of course, we have uh, Wi-Fi here available. It's uh, Wi-Fi A, B, G, and A, C. We got Bluetooth 4.0. We got uh, two USB 3.0 ports on the keyboard. Check them out. So one here with this innovative design and one here. So this is checked to USB 3.0 ports and on the tablet itself, let's see. Okay, so first things first, we got the audio jack, a combo from what I've heard of microphone and the output. Then we got the micro SD, then we got the micro HDMI and surprise, there's a Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt 3.0 port here. What this does? Well, it does a ton of things, so let's get to know it better. So Thunderbolt 3.0 is able to output USB, DisplayPort, PCIe connectivity. It can charge itself, I mean the tablet, and it can charge other devices and goes up to 40 giga per second transfer speed and can stream 4K video to two monitors at once. So it's one of the best ports out there. You can see it marked for also delivering power, not only video signal and things like that. So pretty well spec tablet when it comes to the connectivity front and now we go to the OS UI and applications you can probably already tell we're running on Windows 10 home okie dokie so let's see what we're dealing with so this is Windows 10 home nothing fancy here we got the usual package there's Microsoft Edge there's Cortana there is a store there are uh, the usual X apps there are the folders pretty fluid functioning and I have to mention that there's a bug here sometimes when you press the power button the tablet turns off even though you want to put it in standby and things like that also I want to show you something very cool one of my favorite apps available on this device is 3d builder basically just like the name says you can build 3d items play with them trophy parts household select this and you can even add more stuff, edit it and send it to be 3D printed to a factory and add more items. And of course, you can even insert stuff using the camera option here with its 3D features. So everything is very cool when it comes to 3D editing and working with 3D items on this Acer Aspire Switch 12S model. Now, another app, quite useful as well. It's called the Sway. It's part of the office package it allows you to do a sort of uh, online 3d and not only 3d presentations 
so you can create a sway it's sort of like powerpoint with more embeddable elements we got the heading text image video tweets embeds and all sort of interactive internet stuff so it's like powerpoint on steroids that's what sway is all about now as far as the keyboard goes it connects like this come on excuse me and here we go finally and once you start using it you'll be able to type on it and it will light up there's also a generous trackpad here the mouse is on the screen and these keys are quite soft so this is more of a tablet for um, writing rather than gaming so let's see what's happening here you can already tell they're quite soft so no gaming but more writing hi guys how are you question mark Okay, so we just wrote something on this keyboard, we mentioned the big trackpad, and that's the whole experience that this Acer Asper device had to offer us here at tablenews.com. Now it's time for the verdict, and we go to the pros and cons. Obviously, on the pro side, it's very nice to play with 3D objects and create 3D objects and spin around people and create models of them, so 3D features are welcome. It's a comfy-ish tablet, so... 1.4 kilograms and still better than the Chinese counterparts that are cheap performance is okay we got very solid acoustics a solid 3d camera um, the thunderbolt thingy really impressed me and there's no lag it has a nice design a comfy keyboard and those are the pluses now on the drawback side it's a pricey machine that has a pretty finicky power button sometimes and the, also the battery life could be better should be better and I noticed that the edges, the metallic edges, will tend to chip a bit. Um, it's not good for games, that's for sure. And finally, uh, the screen could be just a smidge brighter. In the end, this product is for the niches, not for the masses. It's for people who work with 3D objects, for people who create clothes, and for people who want to print 3D stuff. So, a niche product with a special offer on Amazon, down from the usual $1,000 to $500, which is quite a bargain. This has been the review of the Acer Aspire Switch 12S at tablenews.com. Bye bye.